we come at last to the final part of the prelude to Nightfall, with Bane throwing down with Killer Croc, Croc and, more importantly, the Arkham Breakout, covering Batman 489 to 491. These issues are written by Doug Mensch, with art by Jim Aparo and colors by Adrian Roy, and the last two issues are also lettered by Richard Starkings. These three issues are edited by Scott Peterson and the legendary Denny O'Neill, with Jordan Gorfinkel assisting as editor on 491. We open on a flashback six months back, so with some somewhat nightmarish arc of Killer Croc being trapped under rubble and remembering his last fight with Batman. He is freed by a flash flood through Gotham sewers, allowing him to get out and reach the surface, where once again he is shunned based on his appearance, even by Gotham's homeless population, so once again he snaps. Meanwhile, Bruce Wayne is in an appointment with Dr. Kin Kinsolving at the Arboreum. Dr. Kinsolving has determined at the moment that Bruce's mind and body aren't letting him rest. She's prescribing a course of sedatives before she moves on to holistic treatment. Dr. Kinsolving also mentions that she sees right through Wayne's hop, uh, fop himbo persona, depending on how you want to call it, as well. At Bane's safe house, Bane and his men are watching news coverage of Killer Croc going on a rampage. Bird quickly recaps Croc's last appearance with a little more in-depth explanation, and Bane draws connections with what they're planning, with the difference that Croc challenged Batman and failed. This spurs Bane on to challenge Croc. If he can't beat Croc, how can he expect to beat Batman? At Stately Wayne Manor, Alfred and Robin are trying to figure out what to do about Croc's rampage. Bruce needs the rest he's getting here, having taken a sedative, but he someone needs to go and fight Croc. Fortunately, Robin has a cunning plan. So, Robin stops by Jean-Paul's apartment, where he's sitting up in his current Azrael costume, except Robin has a different costume he should wear instead. The bat suit. And to set the timeline for these issues with another major event in DC... John Paul and Tim are both wearing black armbands from Superman's funeral. Back with Bane, Trog mentions that Batman may show up, and Bane is counting on it. Croc's rampage takes him to the Eden Park Mall, and Asriel and Robin, and also Bane, go to meet him. Asriel and Robin, Asriel being in the bat suit, fare well in combat against Croc to start until Bane shows up which distracts Azrael, which in turn allows Croc to knock the wind out of him. Bane calls out Croc, who takes the challenge, and Bane promptly mops the floor with Croc, breaking one of his arms in the process. As Croc flees, Bane points out to Azrael that he is not the Bat, and that's who he really wants to fight, and then leaves. In the next issue, we open with Bruce Wayne watching, awaking from a sedative-induced sleep, not rested, and the bat signal is up. Near uh, the Gotham PD headquarters, Asriel and Robin are trying to decide if they should respond and how they should fool Gordon, at which point actual Batman shows up and explains that Gordon won't be fooled. Batman said to Asriel, home, he'll finish off his shift. By the way, the, the art here of uh, Tim Drake makes him look a lot like the Batman the Animated Series version of Dick Grayson, which is fine. I like these shout-outs between the two, but it's, it's worth noting. On the roof of GCPD, Batman apologizes for his tardiness, and Gordon hands over what he has. A riddle. The Riddler is at it again. Robin sets to work on the riddle himself, while Gordon and Batman discuss the delivery. It's unsigned, which is not the Riddler's usual M.O., but it's got his prints all over it. Literally. Across the way, Bane and Bird discuss the Riddler. Bane isn't impressed by him, calling him a joke, explicitly referring to him as a jester, and no, Bane, you haven't met the real jester yet. Bird says he's more of a mental challenge for a bat than a physical one, to which Bane basically responds, ¿Por qué no nos dos? Elsewhere, Robin discusses his encounter with Bane with Batman, and after Robin brings up Batman's problems, Robin is benched as well. As Batman cruises through the city, he has a flash and solves the riddle. Riddler is planning to blow up the clock tower of Gotham City Hall. However, before Batman gets there, Bane shows up and hits the Riddler with do darts that dose him up with venom. 
Consequently, once Batman arrives, the Riddler is actually enough of a, of a physical threat that he is able to keep Batman busy long enough that he is forced to let the Riddler get away so Batman can disarm the bomb. Afterwards, Batman finds Bane's darts on the ground, and returning to the Batcave, Analysis finds Bane's updated Venom on it. While he's working on this, Bruce gets a call from Dr. Kinsolving, where Bruce discusses how the tranquilizer helps, or, or didn't help. During this, Dr. Kinsolving mentioned a Wayne Foundation scholarship put her through med school, and he's surprised to learn that that wasn't why he picked her. He was involved in the selection process for scholarships, so he wouldn't know. After that, Batman collapses in sleep at his desk. If he wasn't going through the emotional ringer already, he, Batman is also wearing the black S-Shield armband. So, again, this is all contemporary with Superman's funeral during the death of Superman. So while everything else is going on, Bruce has his friend's death weighing on his mind. Later, the Riddler hacks GCPD and forces the computer to display a new riddle, but it's fairly easy. So easy, in fact, that Bane sends his lieutenants to handle the Riddler, with the side threat that if they aren't smart enough to solve the riddle, then they really can't cut it with him. The Riddler's plan is to poison the fish of Gotham City, and thus, indirectly, the people of Gotham. Batman takes on Nigma, and once again the Riddler holds his own physically. The only thing that really stops him is when Bane's crew rolls up and opens fire on the Riddler, taking him out of action and allowing Batman to stop the plot, with the clear motivation for this being that they don't want the Riddler to wear Batman down too much. However, Bane still wants something more formidable. Bird, however, has just what the Doctor ordered. Doctor Arkham, that is. The blueprints of Arkham Asylum. Our final issue of this episode opens with Trog, who is having a blast, no pun intended, attacking a National Guard armory with a robot. The guards flee in order to get back up, allowing Bane and company to break in, load up on weapons, including several missiles and a shoulder-mounted missile launcher. Now, I've discussed this briefly on the issue of the General, but just to quickly reiterate, weapons at National Guard armories are considerably more secure than this, and I imagine in a world with super-powered beings, they'd be even more so. Yes, I know that Gotham City doesn't have that many actually super-powered villains, that's more of a Metropolis problem, but considering this is the National Guard, I could see this being a national policy of, hey, you obviously can't secure your armory with enough strength to, or enough stuff to keep Superman out, but maybe leave enough stuff secured to keep the Toy Man out? At GCPD, Gordon, Montoya, and Bullock discuss the robbery. Bullock doesn't think the weapons are for domestic use, which seems optimistic considering how very recent the General's campaign has been. Gordon and Montoya don't say it outright, but they clearly haven't forgotten and they are worried. Elsewhere, Bane and company are planning their attack and picking what blocks of inmates to free. And in Arkham itself, Jeremiah Arkham is starting to lose his grip. Quick aside, I did some checking, and A Serious House on Serious Earth by um, Grant Morrison had came out well before this, so we've already previously established the exist not only the existence of Jeremiah Arkham, but the fact that his... Um, that his grasp on reality, shall we say, is a little loose. At Jean-Paul's apartment, Robin is cutting his hair short, um, that is, him being Jean-Paul's hair short at his request. Jean-Paul thinks he needs to get serious, and the long hair is kind of getting in the way of that. Also, it probably gets really uncomfortable under the hood. However, that day, and it is during the day, at Arkham, the jailbreak begins. It starts with bombs dropped by one of Bird's birds, springing several inmates from the violent ward, particularly the Joker. Then, some strategic rocket attacks cut the guards off from the inmates, killing some guards and orderlies in the process, and cutting off the response of others. Finally, Trog and Zombie use a helicopter to drop the Westler weapons into the yard for the inmates. Meanwhile, the Joker has armed himself and come to pay Dr. Arkham a visit, tying him to a barred window with the shotgun pointed at Arkham's head, with the trigger rigged that if Arkham moves, the gun will kill him. At Kroll's residence, Kroll demands that Gordon send the police to go in and just kill all the inmates. I dispatch five of our tactical units, Mr. Mayor, to assist the state police on the scene, but with the hostage situation, I don't know if any cop could... 
I certainly hope they've been told to shoot to kill. It doesn't work that way, Mayor Kroll. My men discharge their firearms to protect themselves or others. Then you're going to have a lot of dead men, Gordon. Something I do not want during my administration. I ran on a law and order platform, and now that I've been elected, I'm not going to abandon everything I stand for. You ran unopposed. Even more proof of my mandate. Proof of your machine. I loved Gordon's voice for that last one, sorry, but Gordon's kind of, kind of a tricky one for me to nail down. Any case, Gordon is an honest cop, even if the some of the ones under his command, a significant number of ones under his command are bastards, and he really needs to clean house. In any case, Batman arrives at Arkham and starts making his way through the asylum, saving guards on the way, before reaching Dr. Arkham and disarming the trap with a very carefully aimed batarang. And as Batman is fully engaged, Bane shoots off one more missile, clearing a path for the inmates to get through the police. Afterwards, GCPD takes talk. Numerous inmates, including the Joker and Two-Face, have escaped, and plenty of guards, orderlies, and police officers have died. Gordon wonders, at least a little, if he was right to hold back. And at Arkham, Batman looks at the ruin and cries out in frustration. Well, this was a great way to kick off Nightfall, and I'm legitimately surprised in mul for multiple reasons that issue 491 is not one of the numbered issues of Nightfall, as it literally sets everything that, that is to come in motion. On top of that, the prologue has, thus far, kept Batman away from any of the iconic members of his rogues gallery, up until this issue where we get Croc, Killer Croc, and the Riddler. And Riddler in particular being, again, one of the ones who has mainstream recognition through, well, you know, Batman 66, among various other things. Otherwise, we've been going up against either like second or third stringers, like with Black Mask, or completely brand new opponents, like the General. So, bringing in two of the more established characters definitely changes things up a bunch. I also appreciate that this is our first opportunity where for us to really see Bane in action against basically a member of the rogues gallery. And it's not taking on Batman directly yet. It's not even taking someone, seeing him take on someone in the Batman costume, like a, like Tim or John Paul. Instead, we are taking on an opponent who we know is a physical threat, Killer Croc, and who has just beaten basically Jean Paul, and then Bane beats them, but not John, but not Jean Paul himself, or beaten Batman. It really makes for a good way to establish Bane as a threat. Here, we beats this guy who we know is a threat, to, is a physical threat to Batman. Like even Bruce Wayne gives him a hard time. That's kind of his thing. Is Crocs one of the guys who is a very physically tough opponent for Batman, and then beats him handily. And then with the match with Riddler, we are able to tell that he is intellectually comparable to Batman because Bane basically figures out the Rid Riddler's riddle almost a little before Batman does. So we have thus we have this kind of th these marks set up where we'd seen Batman encounter Bane before. We know Bane's backstory from the vengeance from the first issue of Vengeance of Bane, currently at this point the only issue of Vengeance of Bane. So we know where he's coming from. We know he's smart, we know he's strong, but we don't have a yard, we don't have a marking on the ranking. We don't have a yardstick. We don't have a, a we haven't calibrated oh, for lack of a better term, okay, how strong is Bane? Really? How smart is Bane? He's studied a lot, but what does this mean when he gets into, con into the context of Batman's rogues gallery? Now we have an answer to those questions, or at least the beginnings of an answer. We will see more to come as Nightfall proper begins next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. 
Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.